Well, hello to everyone once again. This is Danny here on behalf of all the elders at the Pilgrim Church of Christ, welcoming, first of all, the members of our Pilgrim Church family, and also welcoming any visitor who may be tuning in to this week's video. This is our weekly opportunity for reflection and discernment, or in acronym form, the word. This particular study is designed for Wednesday, June the 21st of 2023. Our newest devotional to video topic of study, one which will engage us for a total of 10 weeks, is entitled The Fruit of the Spirit. Now, if you have viewed any of our previous videos, you'll remember that this series was prompted by three related events. Now, the first two events will remain consistent for each week's study and will thus be only briefly reviewed at the beginning of each week's video. But the third event's contents will vary with each individual study, since it will be determined by that particular week's fruit of focus. The first motivational event was a prayer. While reading this book, entitled Classic Christian Prayers, which, as I've said, was a gift to me from a friend and beloved sister in Christ, as I was going through this, I ran across one particular prayer that addressed specifically the nine fruits of the Spirit as we read of them in Scripture. This prayer was attributed, is attributed rather, to King William III, who was King of England, Ireland, and Scotland from 1689 until his death in 1702. I read the entire prayer at the introduction of this uh, series, but I will read only an extract from it. The first words of the prayer, which uh, enumerate these fruits of the Spirit. King William's prayer begins this way. O oh, merciful God, fill our hearts, we pray, with the grace of your Holy Spirit, with love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. The second influential event was a plaque. It hangs on the wall at Harpeth Middle School, and it was one that I would read multiple times over the, fast, the, over the past five months that I recently spent there as a substitute teacher. This plaque lists the nine fruits of the Spirit, and each reading of the words on that plaque would trigger in my mind a, a little song that has been used in Sunday school, in vacation Bible school, in bus routes, and other gatherings for many years as a means of teaching youngsters about the fruits of the Spirit. It's always been a pleasant reminder of the character traits which God's Spirit should manifest within each one of us who claims to be a faithful follower of our Creator. And then the third connecting event was, and is, a publication. Sherry found this a 1964 edition of Power for the Day at her late parents' home during a cleaning session. It is a collection of two months' worth of daily devotionals, collectively focusing on all the fruits of the Spirit by dealing with each one over a period of several days within the two months. Now, within this current series, I've been reading from one of the devotionals uh, for each video, uh, to provide the bulk of each week's study material. In our previous videos, we have focused on the first three fruits of the Spirit, which, as we just read, are love, joy, and peace. Today, we'll be looking at the fourth fruit that Paul lists, that being patience. We'll again incorporate the same study format that we've used with each week's entry, beginning with a reading of the Scripture passage, that serves as our reference text each week, and then following that, we'll review one of the component, uh, some of the components enumerated within this little study booklet from one of the devotionals. So we start today's episode with a reading of the scripture that serves as our reference text each week. In our previous readings, they have come from New American Standard, the Amplified Bible Classic Edition the Common English Bible, and most recently, the Contemporary English Bible Translation. This week, we will turn to the Easy to Read Version Translation. Here is its rendition of Galatians 5, 22 and 23. But the fruit that the Spirit produces in a person's life is love, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, 
faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. There is no law against these kind of things. Now, let's bring in one of the daily devotionals from this Power for Today booklet regarding patience. There are actually seven such devotionals, enough for a full week's worth. And here's the one on which I've chosen to concentrate for our time together today. The first component of each devotional is a uh, Bible thought. And today's comes from 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 9. And once again, this is from the easy-to-read version. It reads this way, The Lord is not being slow in doing what he promised, the way some people understand slowness. But God is being patient with you. He doesn't want anyone to be lost. He wants everyone to change their ways and stop sinning. Component number two is the actual text, the uh, bulk of the uh, daily devotional. Today it consists of comments about the spiritual fruit of patience and was written by Jimmy Wood of Plainville, Texas. Here are his thoughts regarding the spiritual fruit, patience. How thankful we should all be that God is patient. When a disobedient people turned from God to worship a golden calf at Sinai, it was the long-suffering of God that saved them from complete destruction. It was God's patience that permitted Noah to preach for 40 years to a people, quote, whose every imagination was only evil continually, end quote. God's long-suffering caused him to listen to Abraham's plea for Sodom, and to give those wicked people a chance. Time after time, we see God's patience, how it resulted in Israel's salvation. It was because of his long-suffering that Christ was finally sent into the world that we might be saved. <clears throat> Did you ever stop to realize as you come to the close of each day's activity that God's patience has meant the salvation of many souls that day? Because he has let the world continue for another day, many have obeyed his will and been saved who would otherwise have been lost. We know that God's patience toward a disobedient people will have an end, but thanks be to him that he continues to give many the opportunity of salvation. The third component of the Power for Today devotional is a suggested hymn. Today's is entitled, My Sins, My Sins, My Savior. Although I have, was not previously familiar with this particular song, I read over the lyrics and I felt they were quite appropriate for including in today's study. Here are a couple of significant verses from the song. Now, I should remark that the text of these verses is um, written in the Old English style of the King James Bible but I've chosen to remain faithful to the author's original composition and not edit it in any manner. Here's verse 1. My sins, my sins, my Savior, how sad on thee they fall. Sing through thy gentle patience, I tenfold feel them all. I know that they are forgiven, but still their pain to me is all the grief and anguish. They laid my Lord on thee. Here's another verse. My sins, my sins, my Savior. Their guilt I never knew till with thee in the desert I near thy passion, passion drew. Till with thee in the garden I heard thy pleading prayer and saw thy blood sweat falling that told thy sorrow there. Finally, for component number four, we'll close our study of patience, the fourth fruit of the Spirit, with a prayer about it, again from this book, the classic Christian prayer, prayers. This prayer focuses on one particular aspect of our lives in which the author sees as an undeniable need for patience. This is a prayer attributed to Thomas Fuller, and these are the words. Lord, teach me the art of patience while I am well, and enable me to use it when I am sick. In that day, either lighten my burden or strengthen my back. Make me, who so often in my health have discovered my weakness in presuming on my own strength, 
to be strong in my sickness when I solely rely on your assistance. Now, with each of our previous video studies, I have ended by stating that Paul actually refers to the fruit of the Spirit in another one of his letters. When he wrote to the Christians in the city of Ephesus, he said the following, Ephesians 5, verses 8 and 9, and once again, reading from the easy-to-read version. Quote, In the past you were full of darkness, but now you are full of light in the Lord. So live like children who belong to the light. This light, alternately translated as spirit, produces every kind of goodness, right living, and truth. End quote. We will continue over the next several weeks to move through this video series of studies about the fruit of the Spirit as found in God's Word. And I certainly hope that you'll be able to view them once they have been posted online. Our focus next week will move to the fifth fruit, that of kindness, and will thus move us into the second half of our series. So, until then, I encourage you to make it a regular practice to find time every day to pray to the Father and to study His Word. May God bless you and your family each day. Please remember, I love you all, and I look forward to seeing you next time. Goodbye.